Hi, my name is Marius Frienbeek, and I'm going to talk about a new initiative that I'm very excited about. We have done a lot of groundwork over the last year to start a new Galaxy workflow community, the Intergalactic Workflow Commission. Before I start, I want to briefly mention that the slides are available here, since there are a lot of links in this presentation that you might find useful. Let me start by highlighting a few things that are great about workflows in Galaxy. For me, the number one reason to use workflows is that it is by far the fastest and most reliable way to perform a complex analysis in Galaxy, especially when you have to analyze more than a handful of samples or when the tools you need um, require a lot of non-default parameter values. I say reliable since every parameter for each tool step is defined in a workflow. So you will not accidentally forget a specific parameter, something that might easily happen when doing an interactive analysis. Workflows are often the outcome of an interactive analysis. As a user, you may have tried a few different tools and settings until you find exactly what works for your data and gives you the correct results, assuming there is a correct result. And when you've reached this point, you can delete the stuff you don't need anymore and extract a workflow from your history. So workflows reflect both knowledge and trial and error of the person that defined the workflow. But of course, it would be nice if that knowledge and lessons learned can be shared easily and transparently. So we can focus on the science and not the luck work that has been done many times before. That brings me to a set of problems and roadblocks that I see today in the day-to-day -day use or under use of workflows and their features. Traditionally, workflows did not allow for a great deal of parameterization. What I mean by that is that you may might have designed a workflow for differential expression analysis for six C elegant samples. So your aligner is set up to align against the C-elegance genome and your transcript quantification uses transcript coordinates specific to C-elegance. And maybe you set some other parameters that depend on the size of the C-elegance genome. What that means is that somebody that would like to run this workflow with samples from mouse or human or any other organism, we need to change those parameters deep in the guts of the workflow, either in the workflow run form or in the workflow editor. If you're a programmer, you might think of workflows being tightly coupled to the data they can process. And that is not ideal. So essentially, Galaxy forced users to create copies of their workflows where they change those parameters. And then, of course, it's difficult to keep multiple copies of the workflow up to date with proper descriptions, latest versions of tools, annotations, and other metadata. Not to speak of proper uh, versioning and change logs. And why would you even go that extra mile if the workflow is likely only usable for your own data? And since you've defined the workflow based around the data and you know it's working on your Galaxy server, there's also little incentive to write tests for the workflow. But Galaxy has gained a lot of features to deal with these problems. Workflow parameters, for instance, can be defined once and connected to many steps. So one such parameter can define the organism. So when you run your workflow, you only need to define this one parameter and all dependent settings would use that parameter. This is an extra step that the workflow author needs to take. But I would argue that if we as a community decide to do that, we'll end up with fewer but more universal, well-tested, and user-friendly workflows. Workflows that you can build upon also if you're not a Galaxy expert, because the time that everyone spends in defining and troubleshooting workflows can go towards properly described inputs, documentations, examples, benchmarks, and so on, making it easier and friendlier for beginners. A few years ago, we were in a similar situation for tools. There were many tool wrappers out there um, in the tool shed and other source repositories, but the quality and security of these tools vary. And for admins that were security minded, they had to scan the tool wrappers and see if they had any flaws, which is time consuming, inefficient, and not very easy. This did not scale well, especially if you want to install hundreds of tools, let alone thousands, as are available now on the public Galaxy instances. Beyond security implications, various patterns and conventions, good or bad, were copy pasted from one tool to another. And we didn't have yet an extensive tool schema and documentation that we have now. And collaborating to improve commonly used tool wrappers, wrappers meant you had to send patches or bug reports by email. In response to these issues, the Intergalactic Utilities Commission, or IUC, was founded. In practice, that meant um, a repository um, on GitHub was created where the IUC collects tool wrappers that follow the highest standards and that those standards were documented. Anyone can submit or improve the uh, tool wrapper, request a new wrapper, report bugs um, at the IEC. And of course, there are many uh, other community repositories that are fantastic and that follow a similar model. So we can take some inspiration from the tools IEC. And 
the IOC is not an anonymous mass. There are close to 200 volunteers that have added or changed tools over the years. And like many open source projects, the IOC has a couple of members, or we can call them commissioners, that are both knowledgeable in Galaxy tool development and willing to donate some of their time to respond to issues and reviews uh, to approve and merge pull requests. So to summarize, the goals of the IOC is to determine and refine best practices to guide authors and tool development. And the IOC also organizes trainings, um, communicates requirements to the Galaxy development team, and importantly, also develops and maintains the testing infrastructure. So in practice, the process of improving or adding a tool is that anyone can open a pull request, um, a IOC member will review, and perhaps make some suggestions for improvement. Um, in parallel, automated tests are run uh, so that we can be reasonably sure that the tool wrapper and the changes work as intended. So you can see this here, um, we run plenty of tests on the tool and if it passes, it should be fine. Um, so then uh, we can merge the pull request. And um, so here's a visual overview of the uh, PR process. So the tests are run. And then at the end, um, if everything looks good, the changes will be deployed and they are, uh, the tools will be uploaded, uploaded to the toolshed. The toolshed indexes all tools from the entire community and provides a mechanism for admins to install new or updated tools. Um, and since we think that the IOC and tools from other community maintained uh, repositories do not contain um, any security vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities, we can confidently install these new tools on our server. So this brings me back to the IWC and the central uh, proposal for how we can do something similar for workflows. It is really important for tool development or software development in general to have tests that are run for every change and addition. So we need that. Then we need a central uh, repository where anyone can submit new workflows and report bugs. This has turned out to work well and it avoids the overhead of managing the infrastructure for many small repositories and subscribing to uh, many repositories to respond to issues there. At the same time, we should aim to have proper release for workflows. I'll talk about that uh, some, some more later. And then we need to establish uh, some conventions for metadata. And if there's no standard, uh, if there's no standard, we can follow. And of course, we need workflows. So the first and most simple step was the creation of the uh, Galaxy project slash IWC repository. We've actually created the repository in 2018 following the GCC BOSC in Portland but we haven't added the first workflows until February uh, 2021, so this year, when we started adding SARS-CoV-2 workflows that uh, Wolfgang Meyer developed and that are processing new samples every day on the use Galaxy service. So the um, IWC cluster is here, and this is an example of an addition of a workflow to the IWC. So how do we do our testing? Um, this is very similar to testing tools. We use uh, plenty more command line tool, which uses Galaxy programmatically through the uh, Galaxy's um, REST API. Plenty more runs the Galaxy workflow, waits until the workflow run is finished and compares the output to what is expected. On the top right, um, you see the test definition for one uh, workflow test. To write such a test, you need to provide the inputs. So in this case, um, run accessions. Um, you provide the file which contains uh, one or more accessions, um, and then you provide a snippet of the expected results. So this is a bit piece of a fastq file that should be downloaded by this workflow. We've chosen to run a Galaxy workflow tests directly within uh, GitHub workflow runners. This has a couple of advantages over other possible approaches. We don't need to maintain a separate Jenkins instance. Everyone can fork the repository and run tests on their fork. They don't need additional permissions. Since Planimo also starts the Galaxy instance, we don't have to rely on an external Galaxy server, which may not have all the tools installed that the workflow requires, and for which we can simply see the logs, as that would be a security problem. All jobs run within Docker, so the tests can also be run locally, and we can reasonably expect to produce identical results in local testing. And finally, we can easily test against multiple versions of Galaxy. For instance, when a new Galaxy release is being prepared, we can ensure that the workflows continue to execute properly. One advantage of testing against external Galaxy servers is that they come with reference data. But we set up the workflow tests um, to use the same reference data that use Galaxy servers are using, um, using CDMFS. 
And since the procedure of running workflow tests is not too different from running tool tests, we have unified these within a script and created a GitHub action using the script called Planimo CI action. So most of the logic is shared between tool tests and workflow tests. I'm showing the central part of the GitHub uh, CI workflow here, um, which uses uh, Planimo CI action. Um, and so this means that um, when we need to say, change something within Planimo, we don't need to update each individual workflow. We can just update the Planimo CI action. So now we need a place where uh, Galaxy users and Galaxy itself can find workflows. Um, and while the toolshed can host workflows, it is not ideal. Um, installation was complicated, um, and few users ever really use this. So luckily, we have uh, better alternatives now. DocStore and Workflow Hub are two registries that implement the Global Alliance for Genomic Health, or GA4GH, tool registry standard that's abbreviated with TLS. Um, so they provide convenient interfaces for browsing workflows and viewing information um, about workflows. I will have to talk about uh, Workflow Hub later in this session. Another requirement that we wanted to satisfy, and I mentioned that before, is proper versioning of workflows. So you, you all know that most software has versions. One difficulty with a central repository is that a version refers to the entirety of the code in the repository. For tools, we simply define the version attribute in the tool, as you can see here. Um, but that means we can use Git directly to find the code for a specific version of a tool. Um, this is much better for software that lives uh, in a separate repository, like Planimo, for instance. So you can see that here. Um, and both DocStore and Workflow Hub can link out to specific Git releases of workflows. So it would be great if we can create releases for individual workflows. So we've added functionality to Planimo that will take one or more related workflows in a directory of the central repository and upload this as a separate GitHub repository. And then we can version that repository. So the, to illustrate this, we have a SARS-CoV-2 variant calling topic um, in the central uh, IWC repository. Within the topic, we have multiple directories, each containing a specialized workflow. So each directory here will be deployed to another GitHub repository under the IWC workflows organization. So you can see this here. On the left, you see the repositories in the IWC organization, where each repository corresponds to a directory in the central repository that we saw earlier. And on the right, I picked out the change log uh, entry for a single version of a single workflow, which lists all the changes that were applied since the previous version to that workflow. So you can look at this and see what is new, what has changed, what do I need to know? And these new versions automatically appear in DocStore. And we can find these uh, workflows directly from within the Galaxy interface, including all previously published workflows. So you can see the process of finding uh, workflows published by the IWC organization on the right, the right organization, uh, IWC workflows that will show all the workflows. And then you can um, upload or import a specific version of a workflow. So contributing, we, of course, we, we want you to submit workflows. Um, the goal is that contributing a new workflow becomes as simple as possible. So you can find these instructions in the readme of the IWC repository. And basically it boils down to starting with a workflow that you've run through the best practice panel in the workflow editor, I'm explaining that here. Um, so this fixes a lot of common problems and alerts users to possible improvements. And then you can run planning a workflow in it on your workflow file, which creates this test uh, template that assumes you're going to test all workflow outputs. And often that's not the case. Um, so from this template, you can delete things you don't need. So in our case, uh, we can remove the paired end um, uh, output, paired end reads here. Yeah. Um, and you can um, lint the workflow which checks that the workflow is syntactically correct. Um, and then we need to generate a, a docstore YAML file. Um, you can do this with plenty more docstore in it. And then you just need to add readme, change log, and you need to uh, mention which release this is within the workflow itself. So we've just uh, recently started doing this and hopefully things will become more straightforward in the future. One thing that is a little difficult when reviewing workflows um, is that the .ga format isn't really meant to be read by humans. So here's an example uh, step. 
Note how the index here is numeric. Um, connections are made through numeric IDs and these I, numbers, they don't really carry any meaning. So it's a difficult to look at what, what is the input here. And the tool state is uh, JSON. So JSON within JSON is really difficult to read. John Chilton added functionality to visualize uh, Galaxy workflows using Cytoscape.js. Um, so to improve on the difficulty to review textual workflow uh, representations, we might be able to visually review changes in the future. Another plan is to automatically convert the .ga formats to um, the GX format two workflows um, directly within a pull request. Uh, so GX format two allows for much nicer display of differences. The tool state here is not uh, W nested JSON, and it uses uh, step labels to find inputs and outputs. So that actually has some meaning we can understand. Um, we would also love to have a static page for our uh, workflows. Um, we would like to add benchmarks and uh, resource requirements. And of course, once this stabilizes and we have a good idea what works, we hope this can become a template for other groups interested in maintaining Galaxy workflows. And finally, I think the IWC can play an important role in prioritizing the development of new workflow features in Galaxy. So I hope you will join us in creating many cool workflows. We hope this will become a community project. Um, if you're intrigued, I think improving the IWC and adding new workflows will be a great CoFest project. So with that, I'd like to thank John for all the work he's put into workflow, uh, into Planimo and the tool and workflow framework within Galaxy. Um, Wolfgang has put in uh, our first workflows. He focused on uh, the SARS-CoV-2 analysis workflows. And he's also proven to be a careful reviewer of these workflows. Matthias put in a lot of effort into the CI testing, both for the AWC and the IUC. And I also want to thank the IUC for setting a great example on how we as a community can work together to create and maintain tool wrappers and every individual and team that has ever created Galaxy tool wrappers, since without great tools, we can't build with cross. So thank you. Um, and let me know if there are any questions.